welcome to a kind of slightly different uh, video from me. I recently read the final book in the I Heart series by Lindsay Kelk, I Heart Hawaii, and I considered making a whole video talking just about this book, but then I was like, the month of May has basically been the month of Lindsay for me. Um, I have reread the I Heart series, two of which I did manage to read in the month of April, but I read the rest of them in the month of May and also Lindsay's other new book, which is coming out today as you're seeing this video. Um, so I decided to do a kind of author, I want to say like kind of profile or review of portfolio but basically it's just me kind of fangirling over Lindsay Kelk and explaining to you why you should be reading these books as well because I love them and I love this author. I will leave links to all the books I'm talking about here in the description box below in case you are like oh, this sounds amazing I must order now there'll be links for you um very quickly uh just to address this here, if you're seeing this and thinking that I've just put eye makeup on one eye, I do have a small black eye um, hit my head on the playground. It's fine, it's not as sore as it was, even though it looks a bit ugh. But just address that very quickly in case you were it was distracting you. I know things like that distract me in videos. So, Lindsay Kelk has written the I Heart series. I have four of them here. Um, it starts with I Heart New York, which sees Angela discovering her fiance is cheating on her at her best friend's wedding, her breaking the groom's hand with her Christian Louboutin, and then jumping on a flight to New York with no plan. And the fun and frolics that she that ensues from there. She then meets her um, future best friend, Jenny Lopez, and a couple of interesting men, one of whom pops up in a few other books. Uh, I will try not to include spoilers, but when you're talking about a whole series, sometimes it's difficult not to spoil the first couple of books. But I will do my very best, everyone, okay? Um, the second book in the series is I Heart Hollywood. We then move on to I Heart Paris, I Heart Vegas, and then the ones I actually own, I have I Heart London, I Heart Christmas, which is also sparkly because it's Christmas, I Heart Forever, and of course the final one i heart hawaii which they sent me this gorgeous limited uh run proof copy of which has i heart lindsay on they did include an i heart hawaii tote book tote bag um i have reread the entirety of this series twice now because i reread all the i heart books leading up to i heart forever before that came out and just loved every moment of that I read all the books for the first time in a paperback form, but I then listened to them on audiobook as I was rereading. And I really, really recommend the audiobook. I think the narrator does a great job and you have the same narrator for all the books in the series. Um, I loved I Heart New York. It was a great story about what can happen when you take a few risks and what you can be when you give starting over a try. Um, I read it when I really needed to escape to New York and I just loved it for that. And I get these feelings of nostalgia coming back every time I reread it. But the rest of the I Heart series is all linked so closely and so interwoven back to this original book that you get those feelings as you are moving through the books. I Heart Hollywood was fabulous. Lindsay Kelp did make a video talking about the fact that she wrote I Heart Hollywood when she'd only been there like once for a visit and it didn't come off in the best light. So Angela doesn't get on very well with Hollywood. She now lives in LA um, and knows that it is better than Angela found in the I Heart book. But there are fun and frolics and japes. And in almost every I Heart book, a phone ends up in the water and you know somebody might end up in the water there are things that are just part of the recipe of every i heart book and that's why it's such a great series to read i heart paris i've spoken before about the fact that it's 
out of the whole series, it's my least favourite. It's still a five star read for me. My mum recently read it and she kind of hit the nail on the head as to why I like it less than the other books because she was like, oh, that was so stressful. Angela had to go through so much and she didn't treat people very nicely and just everything she was facing, I felt stressed reading it. And I think that's probably why I <laughs> dislike it slightly so dislike it like it slightly less than the other books in the series it is still a five star read i still love it um the other thing is that i don't heart paris i've been to paris a couple of times it's not my favorite city i much prefer new york or vegas or hollywood or london um and that's probably why um then i heart vegas is the next one and i think i heart vegas is probably my favorite in the series although having reread i heart forever that might be my favorite i don't know the prologue to i heart forever is one of my favorite things in the world the prologue to i heart forever is just just typifies everything about Angela and Jenny in this series and I just love 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 it. Um, then we have I Heart London which involves a wedding. Always great and we get to see Angela being back in England and what that means and as someone who's lived in both countries as well you know it's it, you think it's the smoothest of transitions because both places are kind of home but actually they also have a few problems with them and it's difficult to adjust sometimes and you know the whole elevator versus lift thing um then we have i heart forever which felt very much like the ending of a series a lot of people thought it was the end of the series but then we found out there was going to be more and I Heart Hawaii is the end of the series. But it feels like a really good kind of farewell to the Angela that we met in I Heart New York because there are some pretty big bombshells that happened to her and Jenny and a couple of other characters. Again, trying not to use any spoilers here. Um, and so I Heart Hawaii is a bit like a nostalgic look back on the series with some new adventures that have all those essential ingredients of an I Heart novel, like a phone in the water, like, you know, some slapstick comedy and some real touching moments, some misunderstandings and just solid, beautiful friendships and romance and just, oh, the love the I Heartness, the love. Um, so yeah, the I Heart series. However, I've been going on about the I Heart series an awful lot in my reading recently. There are other Lindsay Kelp books. I have a whole review talking about, for example, One in a Million by Lindsay Kelp, which was Lindsay's last year's summer release. Um, and all the ones I have here, except for my new proof, are signed. I have... Uh, met Lindsay a few times, just just a few times. Um, I, I don't, you know, stalk her author events or anything. Um, one in a million, I have a whole lot of love for. This is a bit of a retelling of My Fair Lady and is, so instead of Henry Higgins, we have Annie Higgins. And um, it takes a real look at social media and modern life and how we as um, people trying to function in the world, what we have to deal with when it comes to life today. And I just loved every moment of it. I will link the video up here. Um, this is possibly my favorite non I Heart Lindsay book. However, a book that I read in 2011, I think it came out in 2011, was The Single Girls To-Do List, um, which was the first standalone. Let me double check, I've got my list here. Um, I believe that was the first standalone. Yeah, The Single Girls To-Do List was the first standalone. And I absolutely loved that book. I was single at the time, I had just moved for a new job in London. 
and it just came along at the right time for me. It was so enjoyable, it was so funny, and yet I could relate to the main characters, I could identify with things that were going on in the book, um, and that was definitely my favourite standalone. Now it's kind of tied with One in a Million. I think they, they have very similar things to say, even though they are their own stories. Um, and I just, yeah, I highly, highly recommend that one. I have got the option of doing that one on audiobook and I keep kind of tentatively putting it on a TBR and then not getting around to it for reasons unbeknownst to even me. Um, but it was it was a wonderful, wonderful read as well. And like I say, I think I'm due for a reread since I read that one in 2011. Definitely, definitely due for a reread. Um, and then in terms of other standalones, we have always a bridesmaid which is also wonderful um this is obviously also signed obviously um and this one is literally what it says on the tin um it is it explores yeah always a bridesmaid what it's like being asked to be a bridesmaid again and again and what it feels like when you're not the one getting married and how that can feel and also goes into the whole cost of being a bridesmaid which is so true you know you've got so many costs associated with being a bridesmaid that i think until you actually are a bridesmaid you don't realize all the costs that you have um and whether you have to buy your own dress and accessories or whether you just have to go on three different hen do's whether you have to leave the country for a hen do whether you end up having to you know buy emergency supplies for the bride on the hen do or at the wedding it's you know it's a costly business and this was just so funny but so touching at the same time there's some real messages in here just like all of the books i'm talking about definitely recommend this one i know i said you know the other two were my top favorite standalones but i also love this one and then we have one I don't have the book for, but I do have the mug for this one. This one is, we were on a break and I had a proof copy of this one. It's one of the few Lindsay Kelp books I don't have signed, funnily enough. It was a nice teal colour um, and it's one of the first books that I read when I moved here. Um, and there's a quote on the mug on the other side that says, We've, you've just had a holiday, I pointed out, trying not to yawn. Wasn't that enough of a break? I didn't mean that kind of break. Um, and that gives you an idea of what's happening there. And when you think somebody's going to propose to you, but it turns out they're actually asking for a break and what that can mean and the misunderstandings that can take place with both parties in that situation. Um, and it was, again, Lindsay just does this mixture of humor and plot with feelings so you're getting this like real true to life emotional message that you can identify with and you can connect with but at the same time she's making you laugh and you're feeling sorry for her characters that she's putting in all these funny but difficult situations and th that is why i just love her writing so much um and then aside from the standalones we have another two series that Lindsay has, aside from the I Heart series. The one that is coming out today, the 30th of May, is a new middle grade series that she has written, which is based around Cinders and her dog, Sparks. And the first one that's uh, coming out today is called Cinders and Sparks Magic at Midnight. And I have reviewed this one on my blog, so I will leave it linked in the description box below. But again, we've got some like, funniness, Lindsay Kelk funniness in there, humour as some people call it, and then we've got some like feelings as well. And if you wanted to know what happened after Cinderella had her glass slipper fitted and moved off to the palace to be with the prince, you want to know what happened next or how she actually felt about it because obviously in the original fairy tale we don't really get to hear how the woman feels uh she just is happy to have a man um this book will tell you so even as an adult reading this 
you know, as a potential book for use in future classrooms. But as an adult reading this for pleasure, it was just like, oh, I always wanted to know what happened next. I always wanted to know what would happen if Cinderella said this. And what I always wanted to know if actually Cinderella had a magical talking dog. Um, so yeah, highly recommend that series. The covers for the next two books are out and they look spectacular. The illustrations are fabulous. You can see them on the cover art, but they are within the book as well. Really enjoyed the illustrations. Um, Cinder, Cinder's hair. Ah, oh, it's so big. It's so big. It's as big as her personality. We love it. And then the other series that, uh, Lindsay has is the, um, it's, it's just kind of called the girl series. So we have about a girl, we have what a girl wants, and we have a girl's best friend. And I read about a girl in paperback form, obviously went and got it signed, you know, because you have to. Um, and it was a really great start to the series. And this character, who is the girl in this series also pops up a couple of times in the I Heart series. So if you like a bit of crossover in your series by the same author, definitely, definitely check these out. Um, the tagline for this one is basically, I'd lost my job, I'd lost the love of my life, my best friend was epically annoyed and my flatmate had pro probably had a hit out on me by now. The reason I point out that I did the first one in paperback is because I did the subsequent next two in audiobook. I should have checked before making this video whether it is the same narrator that does the I Heart series as does the About a Girl series. But because I'd done them in audiobook, I got a net galley copy of the third one, but I couldn't read it because I needed to hear that audiobook narrator because I associated her with these characters now. Um, this series obviously only currently has three books. I don't know if there's another book in this series planned, um, but this just, it has the same feelings as the I Heart series. It's got that same mix of humor and, um, you know, something you can identify with and exploring different emotions and what different situations can take, how different situations can affect you. Um, the, the only reason I favor the I Heart series over the girl series is the fact that I'm just so attached to the characters in the I Heart series. And I think that's possibly because there's only three books in this series. But if you are done with the I Heart series, like me, and you've got, you've gone out today and got your copy of I Heart Hawaii, then there's another series and there's three books in this series. Not only do we have four different standalone novels, we also have three in the girl series. And if there's crossover for the I Heart series with this character going in there, you know, a little character with the initials JL might pop up in one of these books. You never know. Um, yeah, just have a lot of love for everything this author has written. As I said, links will be in the box if you want to go away and read any of these. Highly, highly recommend them. I hope I've given you an idea of what you are getting yourself in for. I hope if this is a new author to you, I have convinced you to give her a try and give these books a try. If you've read a couple of Lindsay Kelp novels and you're wondering where to go next, I hope I have helped. Uh, please do let me know in the comments if you are a Lindsay Kelk fan or if maybe I've turned you on to this author. Um, I would love to hear from you. Please make sure you're subscribed so that my next video lands in your subscription feed. I will back, be back with another video for you on Tuesday. Um, so I will see you then. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.